Uh, so as you can read, nothing about LLMs here. It looks like LLMs is the theme, although I will talk about LLMs in a bit. Uh, how many people here are in computer vision or interested in computer vision? Good, great, perfect. Uh, so this is our talk. Uh, so uh, this is me, Sabarish Madarevu. I work for Accredata. Uh, I lead the machine learning team at Accredata. There's one more guy hiding over there, uh, Raghav. He's uh, also a co-author. Rakshit couldn't show up for the conference, so this is uh, three people working on this. Um, All righty, I'll get started and I hope the audio is clear for everyone. How many people uh, recognize this phone? Quite a, okay, good, good, uh, so I'm not the only old one. So this was my first uh, phone, my first camera phone. Uh, for, for the youngest people in the audience, Nokia was a phone company uh, 15 years ago, I think. Uh, th their phones were built like a tank, I could drop it uh, from my pocket, off my bike, it worked, I just dust it, so, dust it off and uh, keep using it. No worries about screens breaking and so on. Uh, anyway, the, the main thing is that was also my first camera phone. That means uh, family vacations didn't have to like one person holding the camera running around and then whoop, whoop, none of that had to happen. Everyone had a camera and uh, we thought, you know, this was the game changer. The future is here. Uh, whatever was promised in the Jetsons cartoon show about cameras everywhere, you could use cameras for everything. Uh, we thought that was going to show up soon. It looked like it did because everyone was taking videos and pictures of everything. Uh, every couple of weeks we had to kind of go through the gallery to clean everything up because the storage still wasn't there. But even the storage issue is sorted now. Uh, and in fact there are uh, cameras everywhere. Uh, you, you, you know that there are cameras everywhere. Uh, hopefully maybe one or two here for security. Hopefully, hopefully not, I don't know. Uh, but thing is cameras are everywhere. It's not just cameras, storage has also caught up. Today cameras are very cheap. Uh, everyone has a phone and then everyone has lots of storage in your phone. You probably have uh, tens of thousands of images. Uh, that you clicked everywhere, but you have to review or maybe not review because Google offers some 15 gigs of storage, so who cares? Um, Compute is also cheap, right? Uh, your phones can, uh, your phones already have some facial recognition built in. Um, so why aren't we where, uh, why, why isn't the future that was promised here yet? Uh, I would assume that by now there would be computer vision everywhere. Well, it turns out it's because labeling is very expensive. Today, the dominant paradigm is still if you want to train a computer vision model, you need label data. What that means is you may capture a lot of images related to your task. Um, you may have a very fancy model that will train on that data for you. You may store those images with very cheap uh, storage. However, you still need label data. That means for every image, you need a label saying, okay, this is a cat, this is a dog, this is a broken bottle, this is a malfunctioning speaker. I don't know how you figure that out from vision, but still label data is needed. And label data is usually a uh, uh, human intensive, labor intensive task. Someone has to sit down and say, this is this, this is this, this is this, that, and that is very expensive. Turns out that is the major bottleneck today. Um, however, there has been a revolution. Everyone knows that LLMs, you all, uh, I'll not talk about LLMs. Uh, I was going to uh, introduce transformers, but it looks like I don't have to. People have done that for me. Uh, GPT also, no introduction needed. I'll just talk about clip. Clip is a vision language model. Um, unlike the LLMs that are that used to be language only, but are also doing multimodal things. I don't know they're, what they're going to do next. Uh, Clip is a contrastive language image free training. What that does is it relates uh, language to uh, vision to images. There are fancier models out there, but this is our baseline for this talk. How this works is uh, there are images. Images get encoded. Uh, in some, in some feature space, there, there have been featureizers for a while. Uh, nothing fancy happening here. Uh, the innovation is in relating with the text side of things. So text also, you have uh, some sort of uh, text caption. How they train this model is they just take a lot of image data with captions from the internet. They don't disclose their sources, so who knows how much of your information or my information is in there. But good thing is they've done the training. We don't have to worry about uh, gathering data ourselves. And this is the whole theme of foundation models. Someone has defined a, a very large model with a huge capacity to learn, and they've sorted out getting data from undisclosed sources, so we don't have to. They've trained the models, uh, they publish the models, there are pre-trained weights. You go to GitHub, you'll find 10, 15, 20 models like this with pre-trained weights. So uh, part of the work is done, right? So the, they've trained their model, image encodings, text encodings, and there is a, a cross-entropy loss what that means is, for my image, only 
that specific text caption should be a match. Everything else shouldn't match. There's a simple loss to define for that. They've done that, they, they've trained the model. And we forget about the trained model because they did the work. Uh, what matters for us is this thing here, which is zero shot prediction. What zero shot prediction means is you don't have to give any more training data. Um, at the uh, extreme opposite of this is full shot training where if you have a training data with images and labels, you have to give a lot of examples for each class that you're trying to train for, or if it's a detection problem, same thing. For each class, you provide a lot of annotated uh, images. Zero shot, the exact opposite is you don't provide any training data, it just works. Um, the other related problem is few shot where for each class of interest, you provide maybe two, three examples, and then the model learns a little bit about those few examples to make predictions. Zero shot is interesting for us because today we have these open vocabulary models. All you say is here are 10, 20,000 images I have and uh, here are the classes that I'm interested in. Now you tell me which of these images belong to which of these classes, no training data uh, provided by me. And in fact, in our, in Acre Data's Data Explorer product, we've already implemented this because it's easy enough to implement. Uh, so it would look something like this. So I yeah, hope this works. A little bit, but not clearly enough. So for, for example, this was a driving data set called New Scenes. If anyone has already worked with it, it's a pretty uh, good data set. Um, so let's say I was interested in finding images where there was a pedestrian on a crosswalk. I just enter a text prompt saying a person on a crosswalk. And uh, because of the text and the uh, image embeddings that I've already computed, I can just uh, match those with the embeddings of the images. And I get nice results like this, where there are crosswalks and there are people on crosswalks. Note that I didn't have to do uh, any model training. This is with a pre-trained model. Similarly, another example, uh, this is, I think, a Coco data set or something. Uh, I loaded up the data set and I said, give me images where a photo of, uh, of a bird animal Indoor, yeah, I can't read it over here. Anyway, and I got the results. So you see the power of uh, these uh, uh, vision language models already appearing, right? Uh, great thing. Now, uh, if you recall what, what I just mentioned earlier, labeling is very expensive. Turns out these uh, models, they don't need labeling. They work out of the box. You give it a prompt, and there you go, it works. And in fact, a lot of benchmarks say, uh, they, they have benchmarks showing uh, a lot of the uh, data sets out there for classification, they perform as well as state of the art. So great, we are done. Are we? Well, no. Because foundation models, because they have to learn everything, they are very expensive. So the clip model that I just used, uh, it has around 350 million parameters. It's not huge. Llama is 7 billion. Uh, I think GPT is uh, hundreds of billions. I, I don't know, they don't disclose numbers. Um, it's great for a one-time use thingy, but if you want to run it on your phone or an embedded device, that won't work. Uh, for comparison, there, there are these mobile net uh, architectures uh, that are uh, targeted for mobile devices and embedded devices, which are more around the 1 million parameter range. So it's, it's like a 350x scale. So what do we do? Well, a simple solution is uh, it's labeling that is expensive. It's not model training that is expensive. So we have something that is good at labeling. This is what we call pre-labeling. Uh, we take a foundation model, vision language model, I tell it what classes I'm interested in, so I can take those labels from there, and then I have my very teeny tiny task specific model that is one million parameters. I use those labels, I train it, now I have a, a shiny tiny model and I can deploy it wherever I want. So that is the approach that we are describing. And in fact, uh, we've uh, already implemented a version one of this where what we're doing here is I brought in a data set, I think Coco again, because it's a nice data set with lots of objects. And I said, I want to train a tiny task specific model for this. So I'm going to use Clip. I gave it a list of classes. Uh, the classes are bench, cake, bottle, bag, bus, blah, blah, blah. So a bunch of classes given to this model, uh, a, a lot of images given to this model. And it has made predictions. And these aren't just hard predictions saying it belongs to this class or, or that class. These are confidence scores. And uh, because I have confidence scores, now I can also decide, um, is the confidence of 50% sufficient or do I have to go for a confidence of 80%? That gives me some leverage on, uh, do I accept all the, uh, all the predictions made or only some of the predictions that are high confidence, right? So there, there is uh, this bit of flexibility as well. Um, so now is the problem solved? We have a model that will do labeling. 
uh, we have the flexibility to figure out which labels I'm going to take. So if I just went out, put some cameras somewhere and extracted 100,000 images, and then I got 100,000 labels, but maybe only 30, 40,000 of them are useful to me because of the high confidence, that is usually enough to uh, train a model, right? So I would say this is partly done. Now, the next question obviously is, can I improve on this? Because if I extracted 100,000 images, why am I losing 70, 80 because of the slightly lower quality of labeling? So the question is, can we now improve on Clip? Clip is about a two-year-old model. There have been other things happened since. What can we do better? Um, there are people trying to improve on the model itself, right? But they spend a lot of money. I don't have that much money. So uh, my problem statement is, there is Clip pre-trained available. What else can I do? to improve upon these accuracies without spending lots of money because my boss will kick me out if I say give me a million dollars. So, turns out yes. Using a couple of very simple tools, turns out yes. Uh, so, as I said, I was going to talk about LLMs now, so this is the part. Uh, so, Clip you traditionally has just used some class names uh, to get the text embedding. We, we saw that slide a, a while earlier. It turns out there's usually some ambiguity. For example, uh, Let's say someone is interested in the crane class. Now, there is crane the bird, there, is, there are usually origami cranes, there is the manufacturing equipment, right? Um, to the clip model, it, it just embeds it. It doesn't know which one someone meant. Um, but if we add a descriptive prompt, it works better. And uh, the clip model, it, it takes a, a, a phrase as an input. It doesn't, it's not limited to a single uh, class name, like a single word. So works better for us. Uh, we tried this out. We have a nice UI where uh, some user says, okay, this is my class of interest. And then we take that, uh, we ping uh, yeah, some LLM, and we say, okay, here are some options that you should look at because the uh, vision language model isn't going to know what you meant. So look at this, pick the one that is uh, most appropriate, and then we'll do the rest of the job. So that's one part that is going to improve Clip just by making a few API calls to something like ChatGPT. Very cheap, uh, doesn't cost a lot of money. In fact, it's a one-time thing because I, I define my class names once. Right, maybe one rupee uh, maximum expense on something like this. And uh, doing something like that, we notice improvements. Not huge improvements because we're already dealing with a state-of-the-art model clip. So even on top of its performance, we still see a few percentage points increase with ma very minimal work done. So that is the first improvement that we found out. And it uh, carries across different data sets. It's not limited to just the one data set. Another improvement we tried is, well, Clip is a great model, it's giving us labels. It's not the only state-of-the-art model out there. In fact, there is another one called Dino, uh, V2 version 2, uh, which is an image-only model. Clip is trained with uh, images and text captions, so it figures out where, uh, what text matches with what image. Dino is slightly different. It was trained with uh, image data only, and what it tries to uh, see is, uh, what things appear together in an image. B both of them transformer based, so both of them very fancy uh, large models. Dino, so because Dino is trained only with image data and trying to only match patterns within images, it has a different inductive bias as we call it. So some of the deficiencies that exist in Clip aren't in Dino and vice versa. So we tried this out and what we did is, let's say these are some representative embeddings for, uh, uh, from Dino V2 of the 512 dimensional features, we get it down to 2D so we can look at it. I, I can't see 3D. Um, so we, we have so many points and the blues and reds are essentially the labels that we got out of Clip. Clip gave us labels, I said, okay, top 50% confidence labels I'll take because okay, those should be pretty good. And then I'll color my data based on those labels. Based on that, in the Dino feature space, I can now train a simple SVC or, or anything else, doesn't really matter. The only idea is we're now operating with a different model with different sets of weaknesses. And we assume that they're not both going to make mispredictions on the same kind of data. One can mispredict on some images, the other mispredicts on other images. Put together, they work better. Uh, unity is uh, better, whatever, uh, what is that thing? Uh, five fingers make a fist, sort of thing. But we only have two fingers here. Um, so same idea, now we use uh, Dino V2, a second set of uh, features. We run an SVC based on the clip labels because Dino doesn't have uh, a text part of it. it. It doesn't come with its own label. So we use clip to see the Dino model. We do this, it works. Two experts, different biases, it works. We see better improvements than just from the LLM side. But the point is, it is a consistent improvement. So using a couple of very simple techniques, none of them requiring model training at any point, uh, very cheap as well. Uh, the Dino model uh, featureization is also fairly cheap computationally. So we see consistent improvements. 
putting everything together, we have like a few simple steps to improve your labeling flow. What this means is, suppose I'm a data scientist. I come into the office today morning, and somewhere I put a bunch of cameras, so I already have my data set collected. The camera didn't care like what it was looking at, it's all collected. So today morning I come into the office, I load the data set into let's say a platform like ours, because we want business. Um, and then the data set shows up, there are uh, the, the images in the data set, and then there are some uh, visualizations based on uh, embeddings, blah, 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 so you can figure out where, what patterns are in the data. So the data set is done. Uh, let's say a 15 minute job for me as a data scientist. And then I say, okay, uh, I want to build a labeled data set now out of this uh, uh, randomly gathered data set. So I spend another 15, 20 minutes describing my uh, labels, the class names. Uh, there's a nice UI that uh, gives you options based on, okay, here is the class name you're interested in, describe it now, right? 10 minutes job. So in the first half hour of my day, I am done loading the data set and telling uh, what uh, class names I'm interested in. And then we have this labeling pipeline. So first it goes through clip, zero shot prediction. So just based on the class names, it works. Uh, now this is all running in the background, right? You, you specified the problem, you gave the data set, and then you're off doing your things, you went for lunch, whatever you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, then clip runs, gets predictions, and then we use Dino as well, using those predictions to do a further round of refinement. Uh, we put those two predictions together, average them out to get a final confidence for each class. And by the time you come back from lunch, you have your uh, labeled data set. And it's not just fully labeled, it includes confidence scores, so if you think Low confidence scores aren't great. Maybe the image says it's a dog, but it's like a, a bear or something. That could happen uh, the, because the, these language, these models aren't 100%. So you have that flexibility as well. So a few hours of the day, e by evening you have your own nice fancy label data set. And it's well organized as well by class, by image, by, by label. That's it, your job is done. So hopefully this is going to solve the problem of labeling being very expensive. So uh, those of you into computer vision, please give this a shot and revolutionize the world. Thank you.